Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this session uh, where we will speak about the OpenStack usage in the European Open Science Cloud. I'm Enol Fernandez, working for the EGI Foundation, and I will give you a bit of the context of what, what is the European Open Science Cloud and how OpenStack fits into the picture, and then we have uh, Jerome Ponsanel and, and Boris Palak that are two actual resource providers in this uh, initiative, and they will give you more details on, on, on their day-to-day -day activities and, and, and support for OpenStack. So as I said, I will start with uh, describing the, the European Open Science Cloud, or the EOSC, as we call it, and, and the EOSC Hub, which is uh, one of the uh, projects that is developing this idea and put it in, into practice. The European Open, uh, European Open Science Cloud is an initiative from the European Commission that uh, tries to address the fragmentation in the current landscape of the European digital infrastructures for research. The, the, the idea here is that uh, by 2020, the European researchers and, and innovators, companies and citizens will have a federated and globally accessible environment where they can publish, find, use and reuse each other's data and tool in a way that is uh, secure and, and with well-defined well uh, trusted condition. This should build on existing infrastructures and should have a lightweight governance, so, so it should allow to have a large degree of freedom in the practical implementation. Uh, with this initiative, the European Commission wants to give a big push to the, the FAIR um, uh, management of research data. FAIR is uh, having the data being findable, accessible, uh, interoperable, and reusable. That, that will help to have uh, better data-driven science. Uh, so, this uh, idea started in 2016, and, and as I said, the idea is that it will be fully operational by 2020, and the European Commission is funding a series of projects that will further develop the idea and, 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 and make it real. And one of the projects is the EOSCAP. Uh, that is um, a project that mobilizes providers from the EGI Federation, UDATCDI, Indigo Data Cloud. These are uh, main infrastructures uh, existing in Europe already. And those three, with other major research infrastructures, uh, come together to offer services for advanced data driven research and innovation. The idea of this project is that they will create the hub which is uh, the integrated and management system of the European Open Science Cloud. That will be the single entry point for our researchers to, to access the, the EOSC. This is a rather large project. We have 100 uh, partners, and, and, and it will uh, last for three years. It started in, in January this year, and it has uh, 33 million euros of funding. This is one of the biggest projects uh, developing the EOS, but new ones are coming and, and will start uh, soon. But right now, this is, I would say, the largest one uh, in place. So as I said, this will create the hub, the Federated Integration and Management System of the EOSC. And this hub has four main pillars. The first one would be the services, which is what the actual researchers will consume. And these services are both coming from the existing partners of the project, but the idea is that we will have external contributors uh, bringing in new services that can help uh, researchers to do their, their job. Uh, then we have the Federation services, which are the, the glue that uh, actually make the Federation. So we have he here things like the marketplace, which is a place where the researchers can browse and order services for, for their consumption. We have things like authentication and authorization infrastructure. We have accounting, monitoring, help desk, these kind of, of things. Then we have the day-to-day -day federated operations activities, like the certification of providers, um, the negotiation of service level agreement, uh, customer relationship management, and all of these are based on the FITSM IT management standard. This is a lightweight IT service management that is um, compatible with the ISO 20,000 family of standard, but it's, uh, it's um, lighter and it's easier to adopt 
to for for organizations that are not used to, to this kind of uh, working with IT service management. And last, we have the processes and policies that include things like security regulations, compliance to standard, terms of use. So everything we need to to care about to to make uh, things working in in a legal a legal way. Uh, the EOS Hub services, the current one, are listed here. We have separated them in, in several areas. So we have the compute platforms, identity and security, and data management and storage. It's what we call the baseline services that are the ones that allows uh, the research community to build uh, domain-specific uh, services that would be the thematic services. So this Baseline services are the ones that provide their raw computing and storage resources, basically. Then we have the professional services, which are basically human-based, so training, consultancy, and this kind of stuff. And then we have aggregators that right now are basically catalog of uh, software. So today we are focusing on the compute area, and there we have uh, the services coming from EGI this EGI High Throughput Computer, EGI Cloud Compute, and EGI Cloud Container Compute, and this is where OpenStack is playing the main role uh, right now. So this was the EOS Hub, and, and now we'll dig deeper into, into EGI. EGI is, um, as I said before, the provider of, of basic computing services of EOS Hub. Uh, this is a federation that was established in 2010 after years of investment for, by national governments and the European Commission. And this is a European-wide federation of national computing and, and data storage uh, resources and, and ideas that we provide services for, for research in Europe. EGI federates uh, resources from uh, national e-infrastructures. We are currently... Um, we have currently 22 of these national uh, infrastructures, plus one uh, European Internet Governmental Research Organization, which is CERN. And we bring them all together, and we have the EGI Foundation, which is where I work. Uh, and that is the coordination body, and it's uh, located in, in Amsterdam. Um, some Numbers of the EGI infrastructures that could be considered the largest distributed infrastructure in the world. We have more than 260 research um, uh, computing and data centers spread all over the world. Most of them are, are in Europe, but we have collaborations with uh, North America, South America, the Asian Pacific, and the uh, Africa and Arabia region. There we have more than 70,000 uh, computing cores, more than 300 petabyte of disk and, and 300 petabyte of tape storage. And just this year, it has allowed to, to publish more than 600 open uh, research publications. Uh, we are giving service to more than 40,000 researchers. And here in, in this plot, you can see the evolution of the CPU consumption over the last few years. And just in the last six months, we have uh, 26, 26 billion CPU hours being used by researchers to, to perform their their day-to-day -day, uh, work. Um, this is the service catalog of EGI. And um, as I said, basically, we are focusing on the cloud compute part, and this Compute services are uh, running on top of a federation of uh, cloud service provider, which is what we call the Fed Cloud. Uh, this federation is a multi-cloud infrastructure as a service with single sign-on based on, on virtual organization. A virtual organization is how we call a group of researchers with a common interest. And what we do, EGI acts as a broker between the, these virtual organizations and the providers. So we find the right providers for each community and formalize service level agreement between the communities and the, and the providers. And in these SLAs, we define exactly how many resources will be given uh, to the community, under which conditions, for example, this, the community will pay this much for uh, each core per hour, and it will have this kind of 99% availability, etc. Um, 
the idea is that with this federation, we make it easy to research community to access the computing near where the data is, so they can run their analysis, and we also make it easy for the providers to support international communities. The federation also have some extra features. It's not just this single sign-on. We have a virtual machine image catalog that uh, a community can select a set of images and they will be distributed automatically across all the providers. We have uh, centralized usage accounting that allow us to, to produce these plots that I showed uh, before. So we are able to collect the usage across all the providers. We have resource discovery so the communities can uh, discover where to run uh, their, their virtual machines. Uh, we have monitoring of uh, the availability and reliability of the providers, meaning that we are able to, to be sure that the SLAs are, are uh, fulfilled correctly. And we have a unified uh, graphical user interface dashboard that I will show a screenshot uh, just in the next slide. And we are supporting different technologies, OpenStack, OpenNebula, and Cinefo, but uh, as I also will show before, uh, after, we are mainly converging into, uh, into OpenStack. So this is the, um, the screenshot of, of our dashboard, and here this is myself uh, running uh, virtual machines across different providers at Spain, Italy, the Czech Republic, and, and Belgium. So I can, from this single page, I can manage them, and well, it's like Horizon basic features in, in a federated uh, world. Um, the current infrastructure is uh, shown here in this map, it are the, the green spots. We have 20 providers supporting 11 of these virtual organizations. Uh, 15 of them are OpenStack. Then we have four Open Nebula, but two of them are moving to OpenStack, and, and Boris will tell uh, about his experience with that. We have another one, which is Cinefo, which is a Greek technology that is also moving to OpenStack. And with this EOSCAP, uh, project and other EOS-related activities, we are seeing uh, new providers of uh, using OpenStack coming, and we have six new of them uh, uh, being integrated right now. So what we have seen is that the OpenStack is becoming the de facto standard in the EI Cloud Federation, so it's mainly becoming the cloud technology in the European Open Science Cloud at the moment. In the past, we, in order to deal with the heterogeneity, we enforce uh, the use of a standard API called OCCI, but that didn't bring the results that we wanted because even using this standard API, when you move to one provider to another, you had to tweak the usage of the API. You didn't have access to the advanced features because being a common API means you have only the common features. And the tool ecosystem was rather poor, so users were not uh, very happy. So now what we say is basically you need to use OpenStack and sooner or later everyone will be, will be, will be there also. Um, so this was the overview of the EOSC and what the EI is and, and what is our Cloud Federation. And now Jerome will uh, talk about the, um, his experience at, at, at his data center. So, Jerome, please. Thank you, Andrew. So, um, after this overview of the EGI Fed Cloud, uh, I will present you now uh, our experience uh, on how it, do, it goes with the uh, operations uh, of all the components uh, required by the EGI Fed Cloud at our scale. So, first, I will present uh, quickly our Institute, uh, IPHC, so multidisciplinary research institute based in Strasbourg, so near the border uh, with Germany. Uh, the institute is composed of, the, of 400 people working on several uh, scientific domains. It covers a large scale from particle physics to ecology, passing through uh, analytical chemistry or medical imaging. And to give access to the researchers to recent computation facility, uh, we have developed and deployed a scientific computing platform called SIGN. This platform uh, gives access to the researchers to, cloud, uh, to servers as a service, uh, to containers as a service, uh, to several types of uh, storage, uh, rapid storage, so, uh, based on SSD or 
something more common. Uh, all this is uh, powered by self. I will speak a bit more about this uh, later. We have uh, several uh, collaboration, uh, for example, at the local scale with the University of Strasbourg, uh, the national scale with uh, CNRS, uh, with France Gris and uh, IFP, the uh, French Bioinformatics Institute, and uh, the, the European or international scales uh, with the CERN and EGI, of course. So uh, one of the core services of this platform is the cloud computing service. This cloud computing service is based on OpenStack. Uh, we started OpenStack in 2013 uh, with a Grizzly distribution, and we are now really running with Pike and are using uh, the Hadoop packages to deploy the, uh, the cloud. Uh, that's a small infrastructure. We have only uh, 520 cores and are providing as well 300 uh, terabytes of storage to the users. All this is powered by Ceph uh, with a luminous version. Uh, this uh, infrastructure is designed for scientific computing. Therefore, we are not doing any CPU over allocation. Uh, we are also providing some GPU for some use cases. So, the infrastructure is configured on a maintenance quarter. This is not well known like uh, Puppets or Ansible, but it's worked pretty fine uh, for this type of uh, uh, usage. And we have also uh, an availability uh, above 99%, who is for our use case uh, sufficient. So now, some words about the uh, integration of the Fed Cloud tools. Uh, the infrastructure has been certified in 2015, uh, and for this certification, uh, we used uh, both the extensive documentation provided by EGI and all the uh, uh, experts from EGI to help us to deploy the, the tools. Uh, at these times, uh, most of the tools were available as source code, to, and you have to compile them and install them on your infrastructure. Now it's much more simple because all is available as RPM or Debian packages. So documentation has to migrate from the wiki to the uh, Redzedox uh, website, so you can uh, take a look if you want. Uh, we are using all the component uh, proposed by EGI, uh, so EGI check-in for the single sign-on, Casuapel for the centralized usage accounting, Cloud Keeper and Cloud Keeper OS uh, for maintaining uh, image uh, synchronized uh, with uh, the, um, the central catalog hosted on the FDB. And uh, then uh, also the Cloud Info Provider for the resource discovery. So uh, what's to tell about the integration of other tools? Uh, that's now, as I told you before, very simple to, uh, to install with the RPM. Yeah, there is some uh, configuration to complete, but all is done for uh, uh, like an open stack service because uh, these services are using uh, the open stack libraries, for example, the PBR uh, setup tools or other, uh, other the log files uh, facility from open stack. So that's very convenient. Uh, but for, there is some things to uh, to care with is when we are updating, upgrading uh, open stack because. Uh, such like uh, the services, uh, the API, API can change, or uh, the, some uh, behavior of OpenStack can change, so you have to check before the uh, upgrade of OpenStack that the module is uh, working as expected. We have some uh, acts to uh, do to actually uh, with the Nova uh, for supporting the OI component, will provide the OCCI interface. But that's a very uh, short uh, issue because uh, the OCCI is not mandatory anymore and will be removed from our production platform. So to finish the part of uh, at the IPLC, uh, some words about the use cases. Uh, most of the use cases coming from GI are uh, related to uh, life science and health science communities. For example, uh, Elixir, Biomed, and this. And all these communities uh, are using resources provided through SLA. Uh, and with the SLA, we are also uh, giving access to, this, uh, to the resources, to opportunistic uh, resources. Several projects are undergoing, uh, for example, the deployment of GI notebooks service based uh, on the use of Kubernetes. 
uh, we are also uh, working, for example, on the development of the new version of CloudKeeper OS, who may permits to maintain or synchronize images, uh, and also to uh, develop some services as container as a service uh, at the open scale, so multi, multi sites, and the creation of an on demand TensorFlow service. So I will give now uh, the talk to the boys. Thank, thank you. Uh, so, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am Boris Parak. I'm from I'm from Cessnet, and uh, I will give you a brief uh, brief overview of what we are doing right now because we are migrating to to OpenStack uh, from 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 Open Nebula. Uh, we are a part of the GA Federated Cloud and have been for years. So, so that's our connection to uh, EOS, EOS Hub and, and EGI EGA Federated Cloud. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have two logos on, the, on this slide. So I work for CESNET, which is an association uh, created by universities and the Academy of Sciences in, in Czech Republic. And we are also an uh, EE infrastructure and basically providing uh, resources, uh, whether it's network, compute, or storage for, uh, for research and uh, academic uh, use cases within, within Czech Republic. Uh, we are also involved in, in major projects and communities uh, such as Géant, EGI, EOS Hub, or Elixir. Uh, the other partner in, in this uh, cloud endeavor is uh, Cerit Scientific Cloud, uh, which is based at Masaryk University in, in Brno, in Czech Republic, and that's a national center for uh, computing and uh, data storage. Again, offering resources to uh, research communities and, uh, and scientists. Uh, also involved uh, in Elixir and BBMRI and uh, heavily involved with uh, the life sciences, which is waste life, for, for, for example. Uh, and this, uh, this center is, uh, or pl places em emphasis on uh, working with researchers and uh, tries to come up with creative uses for infrastructure. So it's uh, not just for researchers, but it also performs the research at the level of, of the infrastructure and experiments with the infrastructure and its uses. Uh, we have a legacy infrastructure, which is currently, or have, has been for the last seven years, uh, connected to uh, EGA Federated Cloud and has been used within Czech Republic and, and various international projects. And it's, of course, it's mainly HPC since we are providing uh, compute services for, for researchers and they want to do heavy computation. So there is not a lot of overcommitment happening in our infrastructure. Uh, we have some odd 6,000 CPU cores. Uh, we have hundreds of hypervisors in, in uh, multiple cities in, in Czech Republic. Uh, we offer capabilities such as uh, general purpose uh, GPUs, uh, SRIOV InfiniBand, and we have a provider and overlay networks. Uh, this, for the past uh, seven years, approximately, has been running on Open Nebula, and right now we are migrating to OpenStack. So I, I hear you ask why. So what's the motivation? Uh, over the last few years, uh, OpenStack and its APIs have basically become the de facto standard. So if someone asks for a private cloud or a community cloud, they basically mean OpenStack. So there is no other choice, and uh, we have to go with the flow. So uh, that's, that's a major part of our decision. Uh, the, the second uh, uh, major part is uh, having the, the support of the community and the tooling and uh, the ecos ecosystem that OpenStack has. So there is a lot of uh, tools already prepared, and portals, and whatever the users may choose to use uh, to manipulate the infrastructure. It's simply ready for OpenStack, and we would have to modify it otherwise. Uh, so popular demand, everyone is asking for OpenStack. So why, why struggle? Just switch. And uh, we have also growing demands on diversifying our portfolio. So you have heard a lot about containers these days. So we have to go where the community, user communities go, and we have to change. Uh, so we established a few rules uh, when, uh, when uh, trying to uh, figure out how to switch to OpenStack. Uh, first, of, first and foremost, uh, we have to learn as much as possible. 
So we are not trying to uh, deploy some ready-made solution. We simply have to understand the platform underneath. So we have to get the hands-on experience. Uh, we also have to uh, train a completely new team of people and hopefully grow the team of people responsible for handling the platform because that's, that's mission critical. Uh, we would like to avoid uh, vendor lock-in as much as possible. Of course, it's not as uh, easy with hardware, but definitely on, on software levels, uh, we will do uh, as much as possible to, to avoid using ready-made uh, ready solutions. Uh, since we are experimenting a lot, uh, we are expecting dead ends, but if we can keep them within reason and having just a few of them, it's completely fine. Uh, we are also looking at experimental features, which I will, I will be mentioning in, 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 in a little bit. Uh, so that's something that's part of our uh, design of OpenStack and our work with OpenStack. We want to try new things. Since we are uh, switching and starting from scratch, this is a good time to, to look at what's available and perhaps try something experimental. Uh, for us, of, uh, also, uh, uptime and reliability is not the primary uh, issue we need to deal with. So uh, most of our users uh, perhaps need something a bit specific or are happy to try new features even if the platform doesn't have five nines. So some outages are okay if we can bring new functionality. So, so we are not focusing on high availability in the beginning. We are pushing for production uh, as soon as possible. So we started, at, uh, uh, we started this year, and hopefully at the begin beginning of the next year, we will be able to go, go into production with some form of the platform. Of course, it will not be finished in any way, shape, or form, but uh, we will be able to offer it to, to end users and get some feedback. And at the end, of course, uh, we will try our best not to get murdered by angry users because, of course, we are changing the platform. It will be buggy in the beginning. There will be a lot of issues. So uh, we have, will be trying to all, at least half of the team needs to survive. Uh, okay, I, I, I promised uh, some technical tidbits. Uh, so uh, we are deploying in containers. So we are uh, heavily relying on the, the Colla project. Uh, we are also um, uh, trying uh, to uh, orchestrate the whole installation, the whole platform in, uh, in a minimalistic way. So we are using a lot of custom Puppet and, and Ansible. In the future, we will perhaps switch to something more or less homegrown and more, uh, more widely used. Uh, but right now, it's, it's heavily, heavily customized and uh, something exactly as we need it. Uh, we are experimenting with Oven and um, over, uh, uh, SDN uh, uh, on Open vSwitch. So anyone, if there is anyone who has experience with that or would like to know more, please uh, come talk to me. We need uh, partners in crime when, when dealing with uh, SDNs. And uh, of course, we have some fun and games with federated identity, as you heard from, from and all. Uh, uh, we are part of, of, of EGA Federated Cloud, which means we need to connect to their IDPs. We are part of the national uh, e-infrastructure, so we have our own identity providers. And we have some external communities, which also come with their own identity providers. So at this point, we are connected, or we have three separate uh, OpenID Connect domains uh, configured in, in our Keystone. So that's, that's fun as well. Uh, okay, so the main message is we are trying to switch to OpenStack. If you are interested in any of these topics or have advice or in any way, shape or form would like to know more about what we are doing, please uh, come talk to me and hopefully we will figure it out. So I will hand it back to Eno. Thank you. Just a short uh, uh, slide on, on we were thinking together what we are missing in OpenStack. And the message is, is overall we are quite happy. It works as we expect and, and allow us to have the, the federation in place. But we will appreciate some improvements, mostly in, in Keystone, let's say, to, to to improve the, the support federation. So we learned yesterday from the Keystone project that some of these are already being in, in, in the roadmap, so we are quite happy about it. But, uh, well, just to list them, we would like to have hierarchical projects auto-provisioning to deal with uh, our users. 
uh, help Boris in, in this OpenID Connect nightmare and, and having an easy way to, to support more than one provider and, and manage the, that in a, in a same way. Uh, the provisioning is something that we, we really miss. So uh, our communities can be large and users can come and go. And when they go, we need to do something about them. So right now it's quite manual and we would like to automatize that as much as possible. Uh, also, one thing that we lack like is uh, a better documentation on how OpenStack services interact, especially for new people. It's quite hard to understand what's, what's going on. Uh, another thing is uh, we would like to see better tracing of user actions, especially for security. When you have an incident in, in this kind of research uh, institutions, you want to uh, exactly know who was doing the wrong thing and, and isolate the, the issue. And, and well, you have the security teams chasing you and saying, hey, what happened? When did it happen? What do we, know? What do, we do now? So having a nice way of tracing user actions from, from beginning to end would be uh, really nice. And also, as we are in a federation, uh, policy can be tricky. So having a nicer way of managing policy would be also, also good. Um, and just two slides to say you can become a provider also in the EOS Hub. We have this form where you just fill a, a few information about uh, yourself and, and you could become part of the EOS Hub uh, marketplace. Uh, there are different levels of integration. The low one, which is filling that form, will be basically, hey, I'm here and I, I can offer my services to research community in the EOS. The high would be what uh, Boris and, and Jerome were, was talking about, so really deep integration into AI, accounting, monitoring, etc. And the medium is, well, you can have AI, but uh, ignore the others. So if you're interested, just go to the pointers in the slides and, and, and you, can, you can join us. And, and to, just to finalize some conclusions, uh, so EOSCAP uh, is establishing the, the key elements for the European Science Cloud. Uh, we have the first set of services, in, including the EGI Cloud Federation, where uh, OpenStack is mainly used. We have already the service requests, uh, provision and management processes in place, so we should be able to, well, we are already doing that, and, and, and service uh, users. And, and as I said before, OpenStack is basically the main infrastructure service technology in the current landscape, and, and it will keep growing in the near future. And we are open to providers, so if you want to join us, just, just do that. And I don't know if you have some time for questions. They are pretty much welcome. So thank you.